welcome everyone uh, second narendra dabolkar lecture um, last year when uh, dr dabolkar was shot dead by unidentified still remain unidentified assailants on the 20th of august 12 2013 uh, there used to be a colleague of ours by the name of dr harjinder singh laltu uh, he was the one who was the most upset and uh, he wanted us to do something about it and then uh, the university was kind to um, hold the first lecture uh, and we were keen something like this happened basically because <coughs> here is a university which uh, has the intention to build a bridge between theory and practice uh, here is a university whose students uh, we don't have many of them here today uh, for the benefit of our speakers uh, basically because they are in the field there is a six week uh, training thing which they uh, go for around this time of the year so it's only the first semesters some of them who have turned up uh, and we were also quite concerned with the fact that you know uh, intellectual work generally doesn't arouse this kind of hostility and here is a person who is implementing something which article 51a of the indian constitution says is a fundamental duty of every uh, citizen no? to cultivate uh, a scientific temper humanism no? uh, a spirit of inquiry and uh, reform and for this little thing a man is bumped off no? so there was uh, anger and the best way we, we, uh, we can challenge uh, channelize our anger is to uh, write a book article you know, hold a meeting uh, discussion uh, and uh, this is the second round uh, thank you for coming uh, uh, you know the topics been uh, chosen by professor sundar sarukai uh, it's scientific rationality and ethical rationality uh, but a word here about the other special guest who uh, has been invited uh, he is from the maharashtra andhshraddha nirmulan samiti dr sudesh ghode rao he is the secretary for national coordination um, like me he is a teacher in a uh, college in nasik uh, he has been a part of uh, unlike me he has been a part of uh, the maharashtra andhshraddha nirmulan samiti for 15 years and uh, the format that we decided amongst ourselves three of us is that uh, dr sudesh ghode rao uh, will come in first to tell us about the organization and the leader whom he has lost uh, dr ghode rao all of you i first thank rajim prem ji university rajim prem ji foundation for organizing for supporting such kind of the lecture there is dr narendra da bolkar's second lecture in his memory and today's speaker professor sundar i am here to say something about our organization it is maharashtra and the sadha nirmal samiti and our leader past leader dr narendra dabolkar actually today you may find maybe there are 3 to 4 introductions myself is being introduced by professor bupinder then i am going to introduce the organization i am also going to introduce dr dabolkar and little bit introduction by about the today speaker that is professor sundar so there are about four introductions are there so and the major part of the today's program is going to deliver by the our speaker professor sundar so i'll stick to my presentation i am going to use maybe at least 15 to 20 minutes to speak about the our organization and dr dabolkar 
certain points, certain information, of course, it may be available on the website if you Google search it. But still, I want to deliberately put forth before you the Dr. Narendra Achyu Dabholkar, born on 1st November 1945, and as he said, died or shot dead on 20th August 2013. He has completed his education, medical education, in 1970, and he was practicing his profession, medical profession, for about 12 years, from 1970 to 1982. Of course, though it, its profe his profession was good, is good, doing a good practice, still his instinct is there, and he was since a fond of the social service, so afterwards, after 12 years of medical profession, he turned his profession, and his, he stopped his profession, medical profession, and then he started the social service from 1982 onwards. In 1986, he founded the Parivartan Foundation for the awareness, prevention, prohibition, and treatment of the addicted people. And to do this, as well as for the anti-superstition movement, he is writing the articles, creating the awareness to the different media. Maybe newspaper articles are there, speeches on radios, public lectures, and electro and the TV discussions, etc. Okay. A very great thing which was done by Dr. Dabolkar, I don't think someone is doing in the in the entire country, is that whatever the social activists are there, volunteers are there, who are fully devoted for the social cause, you will find their families lacking as far as the financial constraints are there. And so what Dr. Dabolkar has done, that he is the secretary of a one of the a small part that is called as a Samajik Krutadneta Nidhi. Okay? A fund was collected about 100 crore, 1 crore and it was deposited in the bank and what of the interest was incurred through that interest about 50 full timer activists are being financially supported so that they will work in the field continuously. That is a very imp important achievement as far as the Dr. Dabulkar is concerned. In the picture, you'll find uh, Sane Guruji is there. You might have heard, since all of you are from the education background and you're in the education, you're taking the education in the education field, of course. So, for 14 years, Dr. Dabolkar was editor of the Sadhana, which is a weekly magazine founded by late Sane Guruji. Another aspect of Dr. Dabolkar, which is not uh, known to many of the people, that he was a very good sportsman. He was an international kabaddi player and he played in the Indian team versus Bangladesh. And he is only the person having both, that is the Siv Chhatrapati Krida Puraskar and Siv Chhatrapati Yuva Puraskar by government of Maharashtra. Here we will find in this picture one of the um, specific uh, the skill which Dr. Dabolkar has got that is called as a Hanuman Udi or the Hanuman Jump. When the people they are trying to catch the player, he took the jump over them and then goes to his field. Okay? So that is what is the uh, Dawalkar famous for the Hanuman Odi also. Okay. Different honors to him. The best book awards by Maharashtra government for his three books for the three times. Then he is also the recipient of Maharashtra Foundation that is the best activist of the decade award uh, given by the Maharashtra Foundation best in America. And uh, it is honored him in New Jersey and the prize was about rupees 10 lakh and you will find he did not use this money for himself. Okay? The money was given to the organization and actually that money was contributed to the, a challenge which Maharashtra and the Southern Union Samiti is always giving. Initially it was a challenge of 11 lakh and by adding this 10 lakh of his award, the challenge has been increased to rupees 21 lakh. Okay? So if someone is there who is saying that I can perform a miracle or I can do a, some, some supernatural phenomenon, then to prove that we are having a challenge of rupees 21 lakh. And recently you may be knowing after his death, Padma Sri is awarded to him by the government of India. We will find some of the books which are authored by Dr. Narendra Dabolkar. These are some of the titles. Of course, Dabolkar was um, very much liked to be in Maharashtra. Though there are many opportunities were there to go at the national level also, but he was feeling 
that uh, if we concentrate what are the work uh, relating to the anti superstition movement is then if we deeply unroot this uh, superstition problem from the maharashtra then that can be spread through the different organizations which are working in the different parts of the country and so we restrict ourselves to the maharashtra state only recently you may be knowing that his two books were translated in kannada okay by vigyan sahitya parishad bangalore and non karnataka publication they have translated these two books in kannada language <coughs> of course each one of us want to be a successful person in our life and dr davolkar always says that if you want to be a success in your life then rationality has to be a mission for your success in the life i not just go into the theoretical background about the superstition why the superstitions are there why they are prevailing in our society but some of the uh, <coughs> points which dr davolkar always highlights that the reasons for the superstitions superstitious nature of the people is one because of the stress due to the fear another one is instability in our own life and the poor living conditions they leads to the superstitious mind the maharashtra andhasada nirmuti samiti in short we call it as mans it was established in 9th august 1989 and in this year we are completing about 25 years so it's a silver jubilee year and it is a voluntary organization working through about more than 230 branches in the rural as well as in the urban part of the maharashtra we do not receive any foreign or the government fundings you will find still the, the opponents are there or opposing people or organizations are there they always blame saying that the maharashtra and the sadar nirmu samiti receives the fund through the maybe through the america through the christians and they want to abolish the hindu dharm or hindu religion but please keep it in mind that we don't receive any kind of the grants or the fundings from the foreign government or the from the foreign agency and it's a people's movement working solely on the support of people and for the people main four guiding principles for the maharashtra andhasada nirmu samiti the number one is eradication of all superstitions <coughs> that enable exploitation of ignorant gullible people number two instilling scientific outlook number three inculcating secular view point and critical approach towards religion and number four ingraining democratic human values and helping bring about comprehensive social change okay. Uh, the current executive committee dr n d patil is the president of our organization and mr avinash patil is the executive president <coughs> you will find in maharashtra our organization is very well known for the action programs we don't talk only on the theory but we directly go to the field through all our 200 more than 250 branches around 2500 activists are there which are directly go to the field and they solve the various problems of the uh, related to the anti superstition some of the action programs which we generally conduct is it is a this one is a one of the very typical uh, kind of the a conference was organized it is the first conference was organized and it is related only to a very specific topic that is a literature on superstition or the anti superstition um, literature okay and president was mr uttam kamble is a nasik based person you may be you may be knowing about the jat panchayats or the khap panchayats which are prevailing in haryana or in the northern part of the india but the similar kind of the incidences recently happened in maharashtra also and so dr dabolkar just before his death we got one month before his death we took this problem of jat panchayats in maharashtra and one of the suspect is that the the people who are from this jat panchayats they are behind this kind of the they are behind this murder but that is not proven it but since we have taken this issue which is a very serious issue and of course the, the jat or the caste is a, a very big superstition as you may be knowing so to remove this in the form of the jat panchayat we have taken the initiative and about 10 to 15 cases we have handled in the last one year 
some of the, some other action programs are eco friendly holi to stop the colors made of chemicals instead uh, instead use natural colors for the holi then we also are having the a planetarium which is a digital one portable one it can be taken to the rural parts also we organize the various programs with the help of the tribal um, department of maharashtra government and we go to each ashram shala or the tribal schools in maharashtra and we show the planetarium we show the uh, to the students and try to bring the literacy about the how the earth is there how the galaxy is there and what are the different superstitions associated with this kind of the thing we try to eradicate them a challenge of rupees 21 lakh was given to the astrologers to predict results of the assembly elections so of course we are, every year whenever the elections are there we give this kind of the challenge that we have to forecast we are going, which party is going to elect the election or by what number of the votes etc but no one astrologers they are accepting the challenge but every time we give this kind of the challenge the black day in the history 20th august when you will find the dr dabolkar that is our leader was shot dead in the morning when he is taking the morning walk in the pune that is near the omkareshwar bridge before that he was fighting our organization is fighting for introduction of the a bill okay that is anti superstition bill to be passed in the maharashtra state but after his death immediately the chief minister that is prithviraj chavan is there you can see in the picture he passed the ordinance after the two days okay the dr mrs shaila dabolkar wife of dr dabolkar when the cm visited to the place of dr dabolkar then she said that your visit is not expected as dabolkar is a person but it is expected as a dabolkar as a thought and if you want to really visit and um, then you have to fulfill the dreams of the dabolkar that is you have to pass the bill in the maharashtra assembly so on 22nd august you will find the ordinance of black magic bill was introduced by honorable prithviraj chavan in maharashtra and on 24th august it was signed by the governor and from 26th august it was published in the government gazetteer generally you'll find though we have lost our great leader throughout the entire nation there were many protests were there in maharashtra also number of protests were there agitations were held but you will find there is no violence you will find that nowadays that for any kind of a simple um, thing you will find the people they come on the road they do the carry out the morchas nishad morchas but many times you will find road jams are there or the throwing of the stones on the buses are there or the burning of the buses are there but in our agitations in our protests you will find no such kind of the thing was there it was a completely peaceful and rational kind of the protest was organized so how it was possible it is only because of the dr dabolkar's rational thought all the activists throughout the maharashtra they were able to carry out this protest at the state level we carry out a, a meeting to pay the tribute to dr dabolkar on 1st september 2013 at satara at his place and all united together to for the right cause to eradicate the superstition as i said that agitations were throughout the country so here one of the photograph that is agitations by the fira with karnataka ragya vigyan parishad at that time time i was here in bangalore itself where the five days program was there uh, organized by the fira so krvp also organized the protest near their um, administrative building okay. protest at the national level some other part of the country the people at the science cooperation organizations they also protested it after one month um, dhara tirthi andolan at omkareshwar bridge in the pune the, all the activists they lying on, down on the floor on the road so that we should create a pressure on the government to investigate the people who are behind the murder of dr dabolkar 
then for the demand for the black magic, since it was only the ordinance which was passed in the Maharashtra, where actually demanding the black magic had to be, it, it should be implemented in the Maharashtra. So uh, many activities were done in Maharashtra. A massive rally was organized with the help of all organization, all the political party, parties okay, in Mumbai from Victoria Garden to Ajad Maidan. Okay, and so that the act should be get passed. In the winter association of the Maharashtra State Assembly, the activists, they are discussing with the leader that is the opposition party leader, Vinod Tawde is there, BJP leader is there, and to discuss and to get the support for the Black Magic Act. The photograph with the chief minister, where he says that the entire cabinet wish to pass the bill, but still it is not getting passed the bill in the assembly. Because we'll find though we are or demanding for the Black Magic Act, but at the same time, some other opposition forces were also there. We are trying to oppose the bill, okay? The Hindu Jan Jagruti Samiti or some other organizations are there. The right wing people are there who are trying to oppose the Black Magic Act. They are also heading their dharna or andolanas <coughs> near the assembly. Okay? But after that, on 13 December, the Black Magic Act bill was passed in Maharashtra Assembly by the majority. And subsequently, on 18 December, the Maharashtra Legislative Council also passed the bill by majority. And from this day, you can say that the, the bill is actually passed and the act, whatever is there, is being implemented in the Maharashtra state. Many times Dr. Dabolgar was said in his speeches that people will accept my words, but after my death, okay? Which was come true as the Maharashtra government has realized that what is the work Dr. Dabolkar has put in, that is the demand for the Black Magic Act. After his death only, it was getting passed or it was getting enacted in the Maharashtra state. Then once the act is there, again you have to take the follow up of this act. The actual the name of the act is Maharashtra Prevention and Eradication of Human Sacrifice and Other Inhuman Evil and Agori Practices and Black Magic Act. The media has coverage about the Dr. Dabolkar's um, the death, the murder, as well as the when the act was passed. Then also, what are the clippings are there? They are shown here. You will find the 20th date of every month was celebrated was celebrated with the various types of activities like blood donation. Then some of the people who are techno savvy, they are doing the blackening of the Facebook profile, etc. So such kind of the organize, such kind of the activities, the um, protests, seminars, conferences, etc. All are act, organized at the various places on every 20th date of every month. To look into the investigation of the Dr. Dawalkar's murder. Our activist executive committee members, they met to all the political leaders and requested them to look into the matter and to find out all those people, okay? So investigation of murder, again you can find the Sushil Kumar Sindhya, Sonia Gandhi, etc. So are there. Then we come to know that as far as the investigation was carried out by the police, uh, Mr. Ashish Khetan has done the sting operation and where the Pune Commissioner, Pune Police Commissioner, they were actually using a planchet with an unscientific meaning for the investigation. So, Dr. Dabolkar would say himself be the rationalist who is promoting the scientific attitude or the scientific outlook, but for his, uh, for his, the murderer's investigation, okay, the police is taking a very unscientific way of investigation. And somehow, you may be knowing Vijay Bhatkar, okay, who also supported somehow that planchet may be used as a scientific, planchet may be used for the investigating, but then we also challenged Dr. Vijay Bhatkar also that please accept our challenge of rupees 21 lakh to and prove that the planchet is a scientific crime detection method, okay. But then afterwards he denied 
that I am not, I am not in the support of this planchet and other things. Okay. Then we had a signature campaign for the demand for meeting with the governor of Maharashtra for dealing the police investigation. Then after three to four months, the investigation was transferred to the CBI. Then once the act is there, then again you will find there are different misconceptions about the act. The misconception is like the act is against the Hindus. The misconception is like the act is against the a simple kind of puja that is something like a Satya Narayana. If you are performing a Satya Narayana, then also you will be put into the jail if the act is there. Okay? So such kind of the misconceptions or misunderstandings were there and those were, um, um, those are there and to make the people aware about what is there actually in the Black Magic Act, we have tried to organize various types of the camps, various types of the seminars throughout the state of the Maharashtra. Okay? So we organize a state level rally which runs through the about almost about 35 districts of the Maharashtra. It started from the Mahad where Dr. Ambodkar struggle for water was there and it ended at the Kolapur, that is the Shah Maharaj place. This is the concluding ceremony for the, uh, at the Kolapur where we got a one vehicle which was decorated which has got almost all the, uh, let us say, the literature, all kind of the miracle performing equipments, the dome for the planetarium, etc. And which was going through the all 35 districts. And we organize in a day maybe about four to five programs. And we are trying to create the awareness about the Black Magic Act. Now almost about about 95 cases are today's till date are filed under the Black Magic Act and you will find, of course, they are not sent to the court till date, but about 95 cases were filed and those otherwise those cases will be filed under some other IPC sections. But since the, this act is in force, so the, this particular section of Black Magic Act was there as far as these cases are concerned. Okay. You may be aware that the similar kind of the act, the people from the Karnataka also, they wanted to introduce in Karnataka state also. So Mr. B. B. Jaychandra, the Minister for Legal Affairs, Karnataka, who met in Pune with our activists and we discussed about how to go about the Black Magic Act and other things. So after one year, the on 20th August 2014, the first death anniversary was, um, you'll find many programs were organized throughout the entire state of the Maharashtra. Almost every district, almost every Tehsil place, they organized a protest. And through that, you'll find many Dabolkars, they emerge out. Many youth, they are attracted to our organization and they are saying that we want to be a part of this Maharashtra and this is the Nirmal Samiti. The stickers with the slogans were distributed through the Maharashtra. Slogans were like something like, one can kill a human, but not humanist thought. And let us raise and maintain the voice of rationalism. Throughout the nation also, we will find many programs were organized in the memory of Dr. Narendra Dabholkar. Recently, we have introduced a helpline number for the people. So if someone is having some kind of difficulties, some complaints about the god men's or some any kind of the anti-superstition uh, anti related thing, then they can call this particular number and we are ready to help those people or the victims of the superstition. Okay. Again, the Dr. Dabolkar's mission, it is a rationality, it is a mission for success in life. Okay. So throughout these 25 years, we have covered almost uh, many topics or many fields which are related with the superstition. We are working on various fields of the superstition. Of course, I am not going to detail all those fields here. Okay? We are working with many other activities are there which I have not shown here. But there are so many activities which are related with the students, which are related with the schools, which are related with the colleges, okay? which are related with the snakes, which are related with the ghost which are related with the Bhanamati. Okay? So many types of the activity, activities are run by the, our organization. 
but because of the time shortage, I will not go with all these things. You may visit our website and our quarterly journal is there. These are the web links. Okay. So I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Be taken to the rural parts also. We organize the various programs with the help of the tribal um, department of Maharashtra government, and we go to each ashram, shalas, or the tribal schools in Maharashtra, and we show the planetarium. We show the uh, to the students, and try to bring the literacy about the how the earth is there, how the galaxy is there, and what are the different superstitions associated with. This kind of the thing, we try to eradicate them. A challenge of rupees 21 lakh was given to the astrologers to predict results of the assembly elections. So, of course, every year whenever the elections are there, we give this kind of the challenge that you have to forecast we are going, which party is going to elect the election or by what number of the votes, etc. But no one has to lose, they are accepting the challenge, but every time we give this kind of the challenge. The black day in the history, 20th August, when you will find the Dr. Dabolkar, that is our leader, was shot dead in the morning when he is taking the morning walk in the Pune, that is near the Omkareshwar bridge. Before that, he was fighting, our organization is fighting for introduction of the a bill okay that is anti superstition bill to be passed in the maharashtra state but after his death immediately the chief minister that is prithviraj chavan is there you can see in the picture he passed the ordinance after the two days okay the dr mrs shaila dabolkar wife of dr dabolkar when the cm visited to the place of dr dabolkar then she said that your visit is not expected as Dabolkar is a person, but it is expected as a Dabolkar as a thought. And if you want to really visit and um, then you have to fulfill the dreams of the Dabolkar, that is you have to pass the bill in the Maharashtra Assembly. So on 22nd August, you will find the ordinance of Black Magic Bill was introduced by Honorable Prithviraj Chavan in Maharashtra. And on 24th August, it was signed by the governor, and from 26th August, it was published in the government gazetteer. Generally, you will find though we have lost our great leader, throughout the entire nation, there were many protests were there. In Maharashtra, also, number of protests were there, agitations were held, but you will find there is no violence. You will find that nowadays that for any kind of a simple um, thing, you will find the people, they come on the road, they do the, carry out the morchas, nished morchas, but many times you will find road jams are there or the throwing of the stones on the buses are there or the burning of the buses are there, but in our hesitations, in our protests, you will find no such kind of the thing was there. It was a completely peaceful and rational kind of the protest was organized. So how it was possible? It is only because of the Dr. Dabolkar's rational thought, all the activists Throughout the Maharashtra, they were able to carry out this protest. At the state level, we carry out a, a meeting to pay the tribute to Dr. Dabolkar on 1st September 2013 at Satara, at his place. And all united together to, for the right cause to eradicate the superstition. As I said, that hesitations were throughout the country. So here one of the photographs that is hesitations by the FIRA with Karnataka Ragya Vigyan Parishad. At that time, time I was here in Bangalore itself where the five days program was there uh, organized by the FIRA. So KRVP also organized the protest near their um, administrative buildings. Protest at the national level, some other part of the country, the people, the science population organizations, they also protested it. After one month, um, Dharatirthi Andolan, 
at Omkareshwar Bridge in the Pune. The, all the activists they are lying on, down on the floor, on the road, so that we should create a pressure on the government to investigate the people who are behind the murder of Dr. Dabolkar. Then for the demand for the black magic, since it was only the ordinance which was passed in the Maharashtra, we are actually demanding the black magic had to be, it, it should be implemented in the Maharashtra. So uh, many activities were done in Maharashtra. A massive rally was organized with the help of all organization, all the political party, parties okay, in Mumbai from Victoria Garden to Ajad Maidan. Okay, and so that the act should get passed. In the winter association of the Maharashtra State Assembly, the activists, they are discussing with the leader that is the opposition party leader, you know, Tawde is there, BJP leader is there, and to discuss and to get the support for the Black Magic Act. The photograph with the chief minister, where he says that the entire cabinet wished to pass the bill, but still it is not getting passed the bill in the assembly. Because we'll find though we are demanding for the Black Magic Act, but at the same time, some other opposition forces were also there. who were trying to oppose the bill, okay? The Hindu Jan Jagruti Samiti or some other organizations are there. The right wing people are there who are trying to oppose the Black Magic Act. They are also heading their dharna or andolanas near the assembly, okay? But after that, on 13 December, the Black Magic Act bill was passed in Maharashtra Assembly by the majority. And subsequently, on 18 December, the Maharashtra Legislative Council also passed the bill by majority. And from this day, you can say that the, the bill is actually passed and the act, whatever is there, is being implemented in the Maharashtra state. Many times, Dr. Dabolgar was said, in his speeches that people will accept my words, but after my death, okay? Which was come true as the Maharashtra government has realized that what is the work Dr. Dabolkar has put in, that is the demand for the Black Magic Act. After his death only, it was getting passed or it was getting enacted in the Maharashtra state. Then once the act is there, again you have to take the follow-up of this act the actual the name of the act is Maharashtra Prevention and Eradication of Human Sacrifice and Other Inhuman Evil and Aghori Practices and Black Magic Act. The media has coverage about the Dr. Dabolkar's um, the death, the murder, as well as the when the act was passed. Then also, what are the clippings are there? You are shown here. You will find the. 20th date of every month was celebrated was celebrated with the various types of activities like blood donation. Then some of the people who are techno savvy, they are doing the blackening of the Facebook profile, etc. So such kind of the such kind of the activities, the um, protests, seminars, conferences, etc., all are act organized at the various places on every 20th date of every month. Okay. To look into the investigation of the Dr. Dabolkar's murder. Our activist executive committee members, they met to all the political leaders and requested them to look into the matter and to find out all those people, okay? So investigation of murder, again you can find the social commerce in there, Sonia Gandhi, etc. so are there. Then we come to know that as far as the investigation was carried out by the police, uh, Mr. Ashish Khetan has done the sting operation and where the Pune Commissioner, Pune Police Commissioner, they were actually using a planchet with an unscientific meaning for the investigation. So, Dr. Dabolkar would say himself be the rationalist who is promoting the scientific attitude or the scientific outlook, but for his, uh, for his, the murderer's investigation, okay, the police is taking a very unscientific way of investigation. And somehow, you may be knowing Vijay Bhatkar, okay, 
who also supported somehow that planchet may be used as a scientific planchet may be used for the investigating but then we also challenged dr vijay bhatkar also that please accept our challenge of rupees 21 lakh to and prove that the planchet is a scientific crime detection method okay but then afterwards he denied that i am not i am not in the support of this planchet and other things okay then we had a signature campaign for the demand for meeting with the governor of maharashtra for dealing the police investigation then after 3 to 4 months the investigation was transferred to the cbi then once the act is there then again you will find there are different misconceptions about the act the misconception like the act is against the hindus the misconception is like the act is against the a simple kind of puja that is something like a satyanarayan if you are performing a satyanarayan then also you will be put into the jail if the act is there okay so such kind of the misconceptions or misunderstandings were there and those were um, um those are there and to make the people aware about what is there actually in the black magic act we had tried to organize various types of the camps various types of the seminars throughout the state of the maharashtra okay so we organized a state level rally which runs through the about almost about 35 districts of the maharashtra it started from the mahad where dr ambedkar struggle for water was there and it ended at the kolapur that is the shahu maharaj place this is a concluding ceremony for the uh, at the kolapur where we got even vehicle which was decorated which has got almost all the uh, let us say the literature all kind of the miracle performing equipments the dome for the planetarium etc and which was going through the all 35 districts and we organize in a day maybe about four to five programs and we are trying to create the awareness about the black magic act now almost about about 95 cases are today's till date are filed under the black magic act and you will find of course they are not sent to the court till date but about 95 cases were filed and those otherwise those cases will be filed under some other ipc sections but since the, this act is in force so the this particular section of black magic act was there as per these cases are concerned okay you may be aware that the similar kind of the act the people from the karnataka also they wanted to introduce in karnataka state also so mr b by chand b jay chandra the minister for legal affairs karnataka who met in pune with our activists and we discuss about how to go about the black magic act and other things so after one year the on 20th august 2014 the first death anniversary was um, you'll find many programs were organized throughout the entire state of the maharashtra almost every district almost every tehsil place they organized a protest and through that you will find many the dabolkars they emerge out many youth they are attracted to our organization and they are saying that we want to be a part of this maharashtra andhra nirmal samiti the stickers with the slogans were distributed through the maharashtra slogans were like something like one can kill a human but not humanist thought on let us raise and maintain the voice of rationalism throughout the nation also we'll find many programs were organized in the memory of dr narendra dabolkar okay. recently we have introduced a helpline number for the people so if someone is having some kind of difficulties some complaints about the god means or some any kind of the anti superstitious uh, anti superstition related thing then they can call this particular number and we are ready to help the people or the victims of the superstition okay again the dr dabolkar's mission that is the rationality that is the mission for success in life okay so throughout this 25 years we have covered almost um, many topics or many fields which are related with the superstition we are working on various fields of the superstition i am not going to detail all those fields here okay we are working 
with many other activities are there which I have not shown here. But there are so many activities which are related with the students, which are related with the schools, which are related with the colleges, okay, which are related with the snakes, which are related with the ghost, which are related with the bhanamati. Okay. So many types of the activity, activities are run by the our organization. But because of the time shortage, I will not go with all these things. Okay. You may visit our website and our quarterly journal is there. These are the here, web links. Okay. So I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Dr. Sudesh, it's uh, really humbling to see the kind of work which not only Dr. Dabolkar, but thousands of people in Maharashtra and other places have been doing. Uh, it, it is humbling in, in for a variety of reasons. What I'm going to speak about here, as Bupendra has, has already given a one-line summary of my talk, that there are many rationalities. I didn't know I was going to speak about that, but let me, you know, I, I think we will come to that question of what kind of, what is it to be rational. Um, so to me, this opportunity presented itself, one, as a way to honor a very important social activist, but also to give me an opportunity to talk about one of my favorite topics, of which I've had very interesting debates with Professor Rohit here, who I see as a flag bearer of rational, rationality. So it is a, an occasion for me to actually reflect on this idea of rationality in a, in a, in a, in a time in which the question of rationality is under great attack. So I'm going to talk about the idea of rationality in times in which there is a need to understand and rethink the question of rationality and not reduce it to just one particular idea of rationality without losing hold of that idea. So to start off with, so I state my uh, claims right in the beginning. The idea of scientific rationality can be very limited. Can be limited in a particular sense of the word, which I'll try and explain. Can be limited in trying to make sense of social action. And in fact, if there is a particular reason why the question of scientific rationality has not taken off in the way it should have, in spite of the fact, uh, again, as Bhupendra was saying, in the con Indian constitution is the only constitution in the world which has as a constitutional duty of all of us who are supposed to be Indians, this constitutional duty to have scientific temper. But thankfully the constitution or the various uh, you know, uh, texts on these various uh, duties and rules and duties, thankfully they do not describe what scientific temper is in the sense that very few people actually know what scientific temper is. And I think the invocation of the term scientific temper is a very important rhetorical is put to very important rhetorical use in the Constitution. And it's very important to hold on to that. Because the task is not to tell us what scientific temper is, because that indeed is, go is difficult, as I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. But it is also not losing sight of the fact that there could be something called scientific temper. Why does modern India, in its time of independence, want to invoke this image? Why is it this kind of a particular image, which is seen to be a very modernist idea, part of the special, special part of the Indian constitution. Now, the question, if you look at the ways in which people have used uh, scientific temper, it's very similar to what Dr. Sudesh was telling us. Primarily, scientific temper is a way for us to help get rid of superstition in India. So when you look at uh, writer, writings given by politicians who have responded to the question of scientific temper uh, in the early parts, when, when we still had politicians who could talk something meaningful, 
You would had points about scientific temper is a way to get rid of superstition, to convert a traditional society, to get rid of the traditional social evils in Indian society, which included, and people, the left, for example, have often tried to use this idea that the question of caste and religion can be removed through this idea of scientific temper. Now, it's, this seems to be a wonderful pill if you can remove the so-called social evils by just something called scientific temper. But the problem really was that there was really no clear understanding of what constituted. What should I do if I go to the government today or go to the Supreme Court and ask, I want to follow 51A constitutional duty. Please tell me what I should do to, be a, to have scientific temper. Now, one might think that the way the court would respond is to say, well, become a scientist. And that's one possible way. But then, um, let me just share with you a story by a very well-known scientist whose name I won't mention here, not for any reason, but just because this, this, because this, was, this story was told in a public conference at the Indian Institute of Science on science and related issues of science and science education. And this person, whom many of you probably know, was pointing, was telling us a small story about the time in the 70s when he, like many of these you know, uh, people who are very, uh, very upset at the way Indian society's so-called traditional social evil practices were being practiced and were de <coughs> increasing. So he promoted, he with a group of scientists wanted to have a signature campaign of the scientific temper document. So he wanted a pledge, a public pledge, in which people would sign a document saying, we support scientific temper and we will fight against social evils and so on. And then he says this, and remember that most of the people in the audience were scientists, of course. And uh, he told us in that meeting, because he was one of the leading members, he tried to get various people, including the director of IAC and others involved, and he said there's only one reason it failed, that it didn't become a public document. And he said the one reason it failed is that scientists refused to sign it. It was not the people on the streets who refused to sign it. And one of the other science, uh, commentators who also studied Indian science very, for a very long time, he made the point in response to this. He said, very often people have misunderstood scientific temper or this question of scientific rationality as a form of atheism. And he was trying to point out that should really not be the issue. And I'm, you know, that's also the point which the uh, Samiti has uh, done in your uh, brochure and in the point which Dr. Suresh said. Because, you see, to me, what is of interest? I mean, it's very easy to say that all the social evils are due to religion. And that they probably are. That's a completely different context of analyzing social uh, thing. But we have to recognize two things. One, in the imagined independence, in the imagined modern independent India, the question of tradition and the question of society, Indian society was itself a problem. What did it mean to reject a kind of uh, practices of Indian society upon which the very idea of India was based. What did it mean? What are you supposed to remove? You, I think there are very clear instances what you think are very obvious things which should be removed. Maybe uh, examples, of course, at that time of sati, uh, child marriages. I was just, uh, was Indra telling me right outside now that uh, there are child marriages is still you know, very prevalent in one of the schools they went to, and so on. I mean, there are absolutely, I don't think any of us in any society would, re would think of them as uh, you know, uh, acceptable in any sense of the word. But the question is not just about the acceptance of certain kinds of social acts. The question is, what is the tool to get rid of such acts? And the question is whether a notion of scientific rationality is the way to get rid of such acts. And that's why when I'm opening up the space for us to think about this, it is by invoking explicitly a question of ethical rationality. When I look at the four <coughs> principles of your samiti, to me, there are very important principles of ethical action which are present. You could call them a scientific rationality, but I want to broaden this in order to do one thing, in order to strengthen the movement in which way. Let me explain to you in what sense I mean by strengthening the movement. One of the great paradoxes about this rationality movement in India, and as I'm sure you know, there are many. I come from a place uh, in Manipal, which is uh, you know, in, the, in South Kandra, South Kendra has got, uh, you know, now in this season, you will have every night near Manipal, Udupi, and so on. Every night there's a Bhutakola, which is this possession rituals, which are done by various families. And there's a person who comes, they get possessed, and all family, village, everybody comes and sits. It is a whole night process. It's uh, theater, it's art, it's dance, it's music. 
It is also oracle because people stand in the queue, go and ask that person, what do I do, what, what is, I mean, all kinds of things. It's a, it's a cultural process which is so deeply ingrained in that area. And variations of this abound all over Karnataka. If you go to north, there are variations of this, and I'm sure in various other parts of uh, the country too. The question is, given the fact that right from the constitution or from our large scientific establishment or from very important uh, interventions like the rationalist movement, there is a very strong rationalist movement in Mangalore too. Uh, I think there's one, Mr. Nayak, who was um, heading that, or Dr. Nayak. Uh, why do these things continue to happen? And in fact, the challenge, I think, to us, to the, the reason why we need to re-look at this question of what is rationality is just to answer this question that it's not just about you know, like ways of removing certain kinds of social evils, but how do you even respond to the increasing amount of this pro problem here? And when people invoke the question of scientific rationality, very often we lose the game right there because you know, people who respond to this, and I've told this many times, and I'm sure all of you have been reading enough about it, when the ISRO space science, and they're going on a launch, so I was told about the two temples they take a model for launch. One was near uh, Manipal, which is Dharmasthala, and one is Tirupati. And uh, last year, because I was trying to track down real data on this, and last year, the chairman of ISRO uh, was interviewed as he came out of the Tirupati temple after a puja before the launch. Now, you know, this is such a caricature of what Indian science is and whether, what are they doing when they want to do puja to be a model of a rocket or a satellite before it's being launched. It'll be easy to say, well, you know, that's not really being scientific and, you know, and so on. But I'm, I'm trying to step one step behind and I want to understand the process of it. What is the social process? To say that they are not scientific is not solving the problem because it's got much worse much worse in the sense the practices have become so endemic across scientific institutions, across uh, technology institutions, various CSR labs and so on. It's got so endemic that I have not seen as much of religious, uh, religio religiosity and religiousization of a society as much as I see now compared to its past many years. So, the, and I'm not even making a uh, statement that that's right or wrong. That's, I think, a completely different uh, debate because I think that's also the Samiti's point. That's really not the issue here. The question is, what is this question of rationality? How is that going to help us? So while we invoke the term rationality, et cetera, I, I wanted to take this opportunity to just reflect on the meaning of the word rationality and look at its very specific historical context. So perhaps by looking at it, we will understand something about the nature of rationality and ask ourselves the question, what am I actually doing when I want to invoke scientific rationality as a tool against superstition and other practices? Now, um, the, and also, the second most important point, which will be a common theme in what I'm doing, is just to ask this question, how does scientific rationality matter to human action? Because to me, that's the most important aspect of this particular debate, which is, even if I accept that the idea of scientific rationality, and we'll see what rationality is, and, I, and I'll try and clarify exactly what I mean by rationality, even if I accept scientific rationality is a way to discover truths about the world, about nature, about laws of physics and chemistry and biology and so on, what does it mean to invoke that idea of scientific rationality to understand motivations of people's action, to understand nature of social processes? In other words, the question you're asking is, if scientific rationality is a way of rationally understanding the natural world around us, what kind of rationality can do a same or similar job in making sense of social action? So for that, we'll have to believe scientific rationality in principle cannot do the job of explaining social processes like, like it does so effectively in the context of describing the world. So I want to just work with you a little bit to see whether this argument is tenable, and if it is, what kind of rationalities you're really looking at. So I will just start with two very basic questions which I'll keep in the back and, you know, as a background question, by asking a very simple question, what is it to be rational? You come and tell me, I, you be, behave rationally, I want to know, what do you want me to do? Then I can try and do it. Secondly, what is the benefit of being rational? You know, in the context of human skills, and especially since we are in a very important educational institution, uh, we know what the benefit of education is. You may get jobs. I think most students think they get education for jobs. Some people think they get skills. So, so you may get various things. If you are, for example, benefit of being kind, 
you may think there are some benefit of being kind. Maybe other people will be kind to you and so on. 